welcome back to Forest Hill Studio. Today I'd like to continue um, my series on the SSL console and um, discuss with you the uh, console signals to the patch bay and how they relate to the console channels and buses that we're going to use. Uh, hopefully this will be informative and uh, if you have any questions as we go through this leave them in the comments below and again uh, thanks for watching. Origin is a pretty full featured console and uh, this will give you some insight to how um, all of the patch bays and signal flow come together. Uh, in this slide you can see uh, all of the sections of the console that are laid out in colors. First in yellow we have the channel strip which gets your EI, your IO rather, EQ buses, uh, short faders. Uh, down in the orange section you'll see the continuation of the channel strip which is the long faders and uh, their pans. Uh, in the console main section uh, shown here in red you uh, can see how the um, auxes and the group uh, inputs are tied into the main stereo group outputs in blue and uh, you can see where each of those things show up on the console. If we take a little closer look now, um, what you see coming in here is the SSL recommended patch base and um, I've largely implemented it just as you see here uh, in my studio. Uh, so let's go through each section. You can see here the channel input gains and you can see that those are kind of feeding and getting signals to and from the mic tie lines and the line inputs on the console shown here in red. Um, going a little further along you see the monitor uh, control which is next down in the channel strip and those are connected to my DAW outputs and the monitor inputs. These are what get our signal back from the recording device whether using a DAW or a multi-track uh, and get those into and out of the console. Uh, next down, uh, we see the long fader of the channel strip, and uh, basically here um, we're showing that uh, the long fader send and return inserts um, are mapped to this area of the patch bay. Next down, you see the short fader section of the channel strip, and those are of course connected uh, to the patch bay short fader inserts. And the long and short fader inserts allow us to put effects on any channel and we can patch through to those in any manner we see fit in the patch bays. Next down you will see the direct outputs uh, and DAW input section. These are uh, where the, your DAW gets fed from the console, uh, line, recorded lines coming in. And uh, again here it gives us full flexibility to patch things in and out of those uh, as we see fit. Next up at the top you see the uh, group uh, stereo group outputs. These are mapped to this section of the patch bay shown in yellow here and uh, those allow our outputs uh, to be routed to other places uh, as we see fit. Next over uh, just again at the top you'll see the individual bus outputs and the stereo group input section. Uh, this is where we might route from our channels down to group which are then sent to the stereo group that, you, that we mentioned previously. Uh, next in line we have our, um, our aug sends and returns or effects out in our stereo returns. Um, those are mapped here uh, to the area shown in purple on the patch bay and that allows us to get our effects in and out and on every channel that's part of the channel strip. Uh, next up is the Q buses uh, where we can put together a couple of headphone mixes if we're using the console outputs to uh, send Q mixes out to the performers during recording. And uh, so hopefully that gives you some idea of how these things relate to um, overall the console. You see here in yellow highlighted these are the channel strip sections. In blue again the stereo group faders. And uh, then finally 
in uh, red from the master section, you see the uh, basically the AUGS masters and the uh, master group selection channels there. And uh, hopefully that will give you some insight to how all of these um, controls on the console feed each segment of the patch bay. And uh, later, next few slides, we'll show you how a few examples of how all of this works together to take care of some common tasks. And of course, you'll have to come up with hundreds of others on your own, but it really does give complete full flexibility uh, into using it. Uh, here in this scenario, um, we're using the channel long and short fader insert, for example. Uh, for an external effects box used on a single mono channel. For example, if we had a DVX compressor on the bass guitar channel, you can see here that it's routed uh, to the channel one long fader insert send over to the DVX 160 and then from the DVX 160 back. On the long fader, you'll have to uh, engage the buttons up here in yellow to engage the insert into the channel path. Um, for whatever channel you're using on here. Of course, we just uh, pick channel one and you can see that the signal goes out, goes to the effects box and returns um, onto the long fader uh, channel section. This would be the same for a short fader using those inserts instead. The next scenario that we'll look at, um, if we had a channel microphone tie line, uh, basically maybe we want to use an external preamp and route that back to Origin instead of using um, the Origin's internal preamp. Uh, we would route that out. Uh, basically, we would take the tie line, we would route that out to the uh, ISA input, uh, ISA preamp input, and then bring it back um, into the uh, Mic, line, mic or line input depending on what you were using of the same channel one. And you can see over here uh, the section that was used for uh, doing that. Uh, the next scenario here, um, we would have a mono bus output to a stereo group input for one or more channels routed to the origin. Uh, mono bus one, for example, then routed to stereo group one and two. You can see up here uh, where we use the um, basically the mono channel and, and grouping to group one, uh, we would uh, patch that mono bus output over to our digital delay. And uh, then being a mono channel, we would bring the stereo channels back to group bus one and two. Um, and then uh, as you'll see here coming up in a second, um, we go from that mono bus output um, down to the stereo group input one and two. So again, um, just to reiterate, we go from the mono group output up there, number one, we run it to our effects box, we bring the stereo returns from that effects box back to the group one and two. That way we get the stereo effect of whatever. You might use this, for example, if you had a drum bus put together, route everything to the group, mono group one, run that out to your stereo effects, bring it back in on group channels one and two. So the next thing that we would uh, consider doing perhaps would be a DAW channel with uh, uh, some effects possibly on it or not, route it out to an external effects box um, and then return that back to the channel for mixing. To do that, we would do that using the monitor section of the channel strip, but we would take the output of um, the DAW output, we'd route that over to our um, VLA compressor input, take the output of the compressor and route that back to the monitor input. That would bring the affected channel back onto the channel strip for use um, during, you know, tracking or uh, recording, printing, whatever you might want to do there. Uh, the next section, uh, scenario E, we would take a Q bus or buses and route them out to the fold back or studio monitors for um, the performers out in the live room, for example. Here we're taking Qbus A outputs, we're routing them to foldback one monitor inputs, and that will allow either headphone mix 
or out to monitors in the studio, wherever you're, whatever is connected to Foldback One, um, or in the same section, you could easily just as well use the studio monitors. But this is the control on the console that allow you to send out to those um, output buses, and uh, you can do panning there and uh, post, you know, fader, whatever you need to do to adjust that to your own needs. And uh, finally, we come to the monitor output and uh, studio monitor selection. Uh, in the main section of Origin, uh, you have basically the option of having uh, three external monitoring sources. Um, here, you could have an iPhone plugged into uh, uh, Alt 3, the DAW output, the output from your interface if you wanted to hear that. And then, of course, the main mix coming out of Origin. Each of those can be sent to uh, four locations. Uh, first one is a, a set of headphone mixes with a uh, volume control there. Uh, external one, two, and main for several sets of speakers. Um, up there in the yellow box, you can see the external monitor level adjust allows you to adjust alternate monitor one and two to the same level as the main so that when you pop back and forth between your monitors um, you get the same level. So hopefully uh, that gives you some more insight to how the console controls work and how signals get to and from the patch bay, how you control monitors within your studio. Uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments below. Uh, again we're really enjoying Origin here in the studio and having uh, good success with that. I really hope that you will um, take a moment and um, subscribe and like the video if you found it helpful. And uh, stay tuned. We'll be back and uh, try to give you some more insight uh, to what we're going through as we're learning and becoming more familiar with Origin. If you have any specific questions, again, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So uh, once again, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.